Great. If you could start the record up, there we go. Recording has started. All right, great. Um, well, the first thing I should say before we begin, I, I guess I, I do need to acknowledge and make sure everybody knows, if you didn't know already, I'm sure most of you do, but I myself, Dean Serpo, right, have, I was selected as the new executive director of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission on March 18th, 2024. And I will be serving in that, I've been serving in that capacity since April 1st. More importantly, <laughs> I want to say, it's been a fast paced but great first two months. I've, I've been extremely humbled and impressed by the professionalism and the degree of subject matter expertise I've witnessed here from the staff and everybody I've been involved with. Um, I really can't say more about it. The staff here has been extremely supportive and I need to thank them as well as all the five commissioners for letting me be part of the team here at the Gaming Commission. It's been an honor uh, already and I'm sure it will continue to be. And of course, I need to thank I need to thank everybody on the GPAC as well, because you were uh, part of the introduction of me to the uh, to the industry and to the organization, the great organization that it is. So that's where it all started right here with GPAC. So thanks to you all as well. Thank you, Jamie. Um, all right. So with that, I will start with a roll call. And I, I guess I note that um, we do need eight members for a quorum, but in either case, we can continue with our meeting. So let's see where we're at. Um, Gaming Commission Interim Chair Jordan Maynard. I'm here, Mr. Chairman. It's an honor to have you with us, of course. Thank you. Um, Senator Barry Feingold. Senator Ryan Fatman. Representative Ann Margaret Ferrente. Mr. Victor Ortiz. Present. Thank you. And Commissioner Helen Calton Harris. Present. Thank you. Mr. Paul Picnelli. Mr. Jamie McNeil. Here. And Ms. Caitlin Sprague. Here. All right. You ready, Grace? All set? Yes. Um, just for the record, I believe you skipped over Representative Marcus Vaughn, who I do not believe really like oh. either. You're right. Representative Marcus Vaughn. And you yourself are present, Chair. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Very sorry. Um, the other thing I want to make sure to state for the record, of course, to recognize that uh, Chair. Kathy Judstein retired from the Massachusetts Gaming Commission in March of this year. And this body needs to thank her for all of her work, of course, at the Gaming Commission and here for the committee. And Jordan Maynard is serving as interim chair today and he's with us as noted and we're honored to have him with us. And um, I guess it makes sense for me to turn it over to Chair Maynard uh, for some brief words to the committee. So I will be be very brief. Um, thank you. I don't know whether to call you ED Serpa or Chair Serpa right now, but uh, thank you nonetheless. Um, we're happy to have Dean serve as the new executive director of the MGC. I have to let this body know he's already making a positive mark on the Gaming Commission. Um, he's he's streamlined uh, processes, and and we're just lucky lucky to have him. Uh, as he mentioned, with former Chair Judd Stein's retirement in March, which again, we're very appreciative of her service. Um, I was selected to serve as uh, interim chair by Governor Healy um, and uh, continue to serve in that capacity today. That was in March. Um, it's been an honor. I've learned a lot. We've had a lot of fun. Um, and I know many of you uh, on this body from either my time as a commissioner or my time in previous capacity in state government I worked uh, in the appointments office. Uh, so I'm glad to join as an ex officio member of this body and look forward to working with you all. Uh, I know that uh, Mark Vanderlinden and his team have a great research agenda this year that I'm looking forward uh, to hearing the input on. 
And with that, um, I'll kick it back to Chair Sir Puppet. But thank you. Great. Thank you, um, Interim Chair Maynard. And it has been an honor to work with you here and with the staff um, for these first two short months. Um, okay. So again, I want to thank the group who's with us right now for taking your time to be with us for this presentation. Um, I know everybody's time is short, so I appreciate that and I appreciate your support. And for our main agenda item for today, um, I guess I need to reaffirm, or I should reaffirm for us, the group, that our governing statute, Chapter 23K of the Expanded Gaming Act, Section 68, designates that our body discuss matters of gaming policy, advises and makes recommendations to the full commission. So today as such, we will hear from Mark Vanderlinden, Director of Research and Responsibility or Responsible Gaming at the commission regarding the potential research agenda for FY25. And I encourage my fellow committee members today to offer insight and input in regard to the proposed agenda topics. And what we do here for you today, what input you're provided will be brought back to the full commission for consideration. Um, and that's that. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mark. I saw him on the screen. I know he's with us. Hi, it's Mark. I'm right here. There we go. All right, great. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, and uh, thanks for joining this meeting with, uh, it's a lot of pressure when it, there's one agenda item and it's the research agenda. Um, so I'll try to make this as entertaining as research can be. Um, I am joined by Dr. Bonnie Andrews, who works closely with me on all research, uh, all research matters as the research manager for the uh, Gaming Commission. And she and I are going to, to tag team this presentation for you today. Um, and as uh, Chair Serpa um, just said, we welcome um, any and all feedback that you have regarding this proposed research agenda. This is not across the finish line. Um, we will seriously consider any feedback that you have. Your feedback will be shared with the full commission when we meet um, next on June 20th where the commission will then uh, vote on, on the research agenda, considering all feedback from, from this group. Um, so I'm gonna start off and just give a little bit of background. I'll try to be brief on that. Um, I will turn it over to Bonnie to talk about uh, some of the research efforts that are currently underway. And then I will talk to you uh, about and seek your advice on um, some proposed projects for fiscal year 25, which, if you don't know, it starts on July 1st. Um, so the Expanded Gaming Act enshrines the role of research and understanding the social and economic effects of expanded gaming in the Commonwealth, um, as well as, in, as mitigating negative um, uh, consequences associated with casino gameplay. Um, so to this end, and again, with the advice of you all, with the advice of the Gaming Policy Advisory Committee, the commission is charged with carrying out an annual research agenda to comprehensively um, assess the impacts of casino gambling in Massachusetts. Um, specifically, it's MGL 23K section 71 directs the research agenda to examine the social and economic effects of expanded gaming, but also to really understand um, and obtain scientific information relative to neuroscience, psychology, sociology, epidemiology, and etiology of gambling. Um, chapter 23 in section 23, the Sports Wagering Act, extends this research requirement on the Gaming Commission as it relates to sports wagering. Now, I covered a lot of sort of topics that we are intended to, to study, um, and it would never, uh, my understanding, the um, intention of the legislature to say you need to do all this in one year. The idea is that it's an annual research agenda. It's ongoing. And as we kind of go through this process, we begin looking at all of the different topics and areas that the uh, Section 71 
asked us to, to look at. So we've covered a lot. There's always more to cover. Um, and we will continue to, to plug away, both at understanding the topics that are required to do, but also keeping our sort of ear to the ground and understanding what are the emerging topics so that the research agenda remains as relevant and as useful to as many stakeholders as possible. So to um, support the implementation of the, the research agenda, back in 2019, the commission adopted a research strategic plan. Um, that research strategic plan covered a lot of grounds in terms of the structure of, of how a research program could be carried out. But um, importantly, it identified seven core areas of research that the Gaming Commission should um, operationalize. And so we've, over the course of the past several years, we've kind of organized our annual research agenda under these seven core areas. And those include economic research, which is I won't read the, the full description in your memo, but safe to say it analyzes the fiscal and economic effects of expanded gaming across the Commonwealth. It includes social research, which analyzes the social and health effects of expanded gaming across the Commonwealth. Um, it includes a line of research that we call community engaged research, which is really research to understand and address the impacts of gambling in Massachusetts communities. The specific topic of that research and the design of it, the question is developed by the community through a community driven process. Um, we have several several reports that have kind of spawned from this, uh, this specific line of research. Um, we have a line of research that's dedicated to public safety. Um, in that public safety um, research includes crimes, calls for service, collision, and driving under the influence data. Our primary stakeholder for this line of research are the communities in which our casinos are, are operating. We work closely with a crime analyst as well as local police departments, chiefs and analysts um, in order to deliver them information that's actionable um, as it relates to, to uh, casino related um, crimes indirectly and, and directly. Um, Bonnie will talk to you a little bit about um, how we're taking that public safety line of research um, and extending it into other areas of, of public safety here in just a second. Um, we also have a line of research on responsible gaming evaluation. As you may know or may not know, the Gaming Commission um, has implemented a number of responsible gaming or player health measures um, in the Commonwealth over the past several years. Um, that uh, those programs and those services should be driven and informed by um, a rigorous third party evaluation process. Um, we have evaluated each of the, the uh, programs in Massachusetts at this point, and the latest of which was an evaluation of the Game Sense program that, that uh, Dr. Andrews will talk to you about in just a second, too. Um, we, uh, the Massachusetts Gaming Impact Program, in other words, following the same group of people over the course of a number of years in order to be able to tell a different type of story um, and provide different type of information than perhaps a prevalence story, which provides a prevalence study that provides just a snapshot in time. While this study was wrapped up some years ago, um, it was the first major longitudinal cohort study of gambling behavior in the United States. Um, it continues to provide valuable information um, regarding the course of gambling and problem gambling behavior over time. Um, just one more uh, data sharing. Um, the Gaming Commission um, is dedicated to building a body of data and research that can um, be used by other researchers in the Commonwealth and outside of the Commonwealth um, in, in um, spirit of full transparency and extending the use of the, the research and the data that is being created in Massachusetts. So um, we have launched a, a few years ago the Massachusetts Open Data Exchange. It's a, a portal by which researchers can request access to the raw data and do their own uh, their own analyses and, and um, use uh, publish their own research. Um, so those are the seven core areas, um, and you'll see that when I come back around to talk about the FY25 research agenda, I'll largely be kind of following that, that same template. Um, but before I get there, I think it's, it's really important to understand that 
as we move forward into FY25, in the backdrop are a number of research projects that are currently under underway. And uh, so with that, I'll turn that over to uh, Bonnie Andrews to describe, uh, describe that. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mark. Um, it's really wonderful to be able to present for all of you today. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I just wanted to take you through um, a brief tour of our um, ongoing and upcoming research initiatives. Um, so I was wondering if everybody could uh, see my screen, first of all. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to kind of um, start by, again, saying that the proposed FY25 research agenda is taking place in the context of several multi-year research projects currently underway. Um, right now we have about um, 15 ongoing research projects. Um, and we to start off with, in our social and economic research, um, there's the 2024 Integrated Impact Report, um, which is a large and comprehensive report that's going to be looking at the overall social and economic impacts since Plain Ridge Park Casino opened in 2015. Um, and then kind of moving on, um, there's going to be an online panel survey 2023 report, which is part of our ongoing monitoring efforts. Um, this report is going to assess changes in gambling participation from 2022 to 2023, as well as the prevalence of problem gambling. Um, we also have a report coming up that's on out-of-state visitorship to Massachusetts casinos. Um, there's a report on the early impact of sports wagering, um, which is an economic report that assesses impacts from currently licensed operators of retail sports betting. Um, so we'll focus heavily on the, um, the, the three Massachusetts casinos. Um, and lastly, um, we have a report that is um, going to be coming up very soon, um, which is the impacts of advertising on gambling behavior in Massachusetts. Um, so this report is going to assess evidence on whether and how advertising affects gambling behavior um, and presents recommendations to minimize gambling related harm with a specific focus on Massachusetts and the recent introduction of sports wagering in the Commonwealth. Um, so to move on to our public safety area of research, um, we're going to be, um, right now, we're in the process of preparing a Plainville public safety report, um, and that's a report on public safety in Plainville and surrounding communities. I think the last report was done somewhere around 2018, um, so this is going to feature data through 2023. Um, and we're very excited that um, we recently um, posted a procurement and awarded um, funding to do a study of sex trafficking, um, the influence of casinos and casino resorts on sex trafficking in the Commonwealth. Um, and this RFR was prepared um, in collaboration with a variety of stakeholders um, and was recently awarded to um, Safe Exit Initiative to conduct this study. Um, in our community-engaged research um, line of research, um, there's an ongoing study of youth perspectives on the legalization of sports wagering. Um, so this is going to be um, per, um, done by Newark at the University of Chicago, and um, they're going to be working with youth, um, a community advisory board, um, to co-design and support implementation of a study focused on the legalization of sports betting in Massachusetts and its impact on young adults age 18 to 25. Um, and the next couple of studies um, were studies that were um, recently awarded, actually, um, in our community-engaged research. Um, so the first study is going to be um, a study of the impact of paid media on awareness and participation of sports betting among college students. Um, so this community-engaged research project awarded to Suffolk University will focus on the social health and educational impacts of the introduction of legal sports wagering on higher education students in Massachusetts. Um, particularly regarding their exposure to and participating in sports betting through paid media advertising. Um, and lastly, um, again, recently awarded um, as part of our FY24 research agenda, um, this study is called Gambling on Addiction Recovery, Community Perspectives on the Impact of Legalized Gambling in Massachusetts. And um, this community-engaged research project is awarded to um, Texas Tech University and aims to understand the impact of legalized gambling and sports betting on addiction recovery communities in Massachusetts. Um, next, we have our um, evaluation of responsible gaming initiatives. 
And um, this study was actually recently presented, um, the Game Sense evaluation, um, and that was an evaluation of our Game Sense program um, in the three Massachusetts casinos. And that is available on our website, on the Research Agenda website. I highly recommend um, checking it out. So that's something that was recently completed. Um, we also have an ongoing study of um, pre-commitment initiatives. Um, so this, this study um, assesses both the, um, the limited adherence features and also incentivizing use of pre-commitment tools. Um, the next study actually um, builds on a, um, a request for information that we had issued um, in last summer, actually about a year ago. Um, and we have currently have an RFR posted for this study. Um, and this is a study on the use of AI in the gaming industry, um, as well as um, player, how to identify player risk and respond. Um, so this study deals with both AI and player risk identification and response research services. Um, and again, that's um, a study that we, um, that we currently have posted in RFR for. Um, we have two legislatively mandated studies on sports wagering. Um, so as part of the law um, legalizing sports wagering in Massachusetts, there were two legislatively mandated studies. Um, one of them is a prospective study on the feasibility and potential impact of allowing retail locations in Massachusetts to operate sports wagering kiosks. And the other is a study on the participation by uh, minority business enterprises, women business enterprises, and veteran business enterprises in the sports wagering industry in the Commonwealth. So diversity in the sports wagering industry. Um, we also have an open procurement for um, a study on, um, on the impact of eye gaming on public health. Um, with a particular focus on comparison of participants with participants in other forms of gaming, comorbidity with problem gambling, and impacts on youth under the age of 25. Um, and lastly, um, we have recently um, collaborated with the Community Mitigation Fund um, to launch a, um, a line of community-engaged research funded through the Community Mitigation Fund. Um, and we're supporting several ongoing and upcoming um, gambling harm reduction community-engaged research projects through that initiative. Um, so that was kind of just a, a brief overview and tour of the, um, the ongoing and upcoming research initiatives that kind of sets the context for the FY25 research agenda. Um, so I just wanted to turn that um, back over to um, Mark. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Bonnie. Um, yeah, you know, we, there's kind of a constant role of, of research. It's not contained within a specific fiscal year. So when we have an approved research agenda at the beginning of the fiscal year, we will certainly begin the process of new procurements, but understanding that we can't launch those all, get those all out the door at one time, given a fairly limited resources. So we, it's a, it's a process of receiving deliverables that are coming in, but also um, engaging in new procurement processes. So um, those are all the, the studies that we currently have underway. And just a couple, a couple of notes. Um, there was one study looking at uh, pre-commitment mandatory versus voluntary limits that was funded um, by uh, the International Center for Responsible Gaming, um, and that's important um, because it's, it's, you know, we have a research program, we have a research agenda um, that that it's funded primarily through the Public Health Trust Fund. But it's great that when we have alternative sources of funding that continue to answer important um, responsible gaming or research questions within Massachusetts. And similarly, um, at the very end, Bonnie mentioned uh, some community engaged research projects that are funded out of the Community Mitigation Fund. Um, also a fund that comes from gaming revenues, taxes on gaming revenues, but a different fund. And so again, another way in which we're able to kind of maximize this research program um, by by using al alternative sources of funding, and you know it's it's hard. There's there's really not there's no federal funding for gambling related research at least at this point, um, and so Massachusetts is incredibly fortunate to have money that is dedicated to doing to doing research related specifically to gambling, um, but at the same time. You know, we look and we try to find other ways to be as creative to maximize this budget. So speaking of budget um, and the research agenda, I'm going to dive right into the proposed FY25 research agenda. 
So the FY25 research agenda is estimated to be $1,930,000. This is roughly a $40,000 increase over the FY24 uh, research budget. So roughly level funding. And in fact, the overall funding for research and responsible gaming efforts in Massachusetts between FY24 and FY25 is, is level funded. So this is pretty consistent uh, across the board. Um, the FY25 research priorities are established. We'll continue to work with our finance division in order to make sure that we have the sufficient funding. Um, you can never forget the finance division for making sure that you have the money coming in in order to get the, the procurements um, out the door. So it's, a, it's an important cycle that we go through. Um, you'll note as I start talking about this research agenda uh, that there is a specific focus specifically on youth and sports wagering, and you'll see that pop up on very specific um, sports wagering research, but also in some of our social research, it's woven, woven into that. Um, in your memo, you'll see it's organized by the different research categories that I mentioned at the beginning, the seven research categories. Um, it'll list the task of deliverable. Um, we also want to always try to tie it back to the statutory um, or practical significance. So you'll see you'll see references back to 23K or 23N um, as it relates to, to the research agenda. So regarding the social and economic research, we, we have just a couple studies, um, three studies this year that could fall under this category. Um, the first is an online panel survey um, with a oversample of young adults and ex an expanded section on young adults and sports betting. Um, over the past several years, we've done online panels, I think 22, 23, 24, now 25. So we have a, a, a sort of a long uh, history of this specific type of studies so that we're able to begin to track and understand gambling behavior through a, this replication. FY25 will be slightly different. FY25, um, we recognize that that there that we want to do more surveillance, want to do a better job of understanding specifically how sports wagering is affecting young adults, and so um, that's why uh, we we slightly expanded the focus of the FY25 online panel. And there's there was a sort of a seminal study that was published by the NCAA um, that focused on young adults, which assess sports betting attitudes and behaviors among college students specifically, and as well as some, as to some degree, young adults not attending college. To the degree possible, we wanted to, we'll build this online panel so that we can be, it's at least comparable to that NCAA study. Um, the fortunate piece of this study is that we'll also be able to compare younger adults gambling behaviors um, and impacts compared to the old, older adults or different demographics as well. Um, the second study is a report on the social and economic impacts of sports betting in Massachusetts. Now, uh, the data collection is happening right, right now, and that was part of the FY24 research agenda. So in FY25, it's, it's drafting and, and releasing a report related to that. So with uh, sports betting um, at casinos since January 2023 and online since March of 2023, they will assess um, the impacts of this activity and create a report um, on the initial impacts of sports betting in, in Massachusetts. Um, the, I think the intention of this is that we can use this as sort of a baseline, which in future years we can, we can build on to have a clearer picture of how sports wagering, what are the sports wagering impacts in Massachusetts over time. This is truly a mix of sort of an economic research study as well as, as social. So it's uh, it's intended to, to kind of cover both areas. Um, moving on to the, the last of this category, um, we are proposing um, the funding for the Springfield Youth Health Survey. So we provided funding to, it's the Springfield uh, Public School District or the Western Public Health Institute, the Public Health Institute of Western Massachusetts uh, collaborate on this project. Um, there's a statewide youth health survey that's administered by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. Springfield um, administers uh, their, their own version of that youth, youth health survey. Um, and we 
feel it's important to continue to uh, support that that effort in Springfield. And it was originally actually funded wanting to understand um, how has gambling behavior, problem gambling affected youth with the opening of MGM Springfield in 2018. And I think that it's going to have great utility in really understanding how um, sports wagering was affecting uh, affecting this same group. Um, so that's uh, social and economic research. Moving on to public safety research. So Bonnie mentioned that um, we are wrapping up a public safety study in Plainville. Um, so that means that in the last couple of years, we've done um, uh, a study in Everett and Springfield and now in Plainville. And so with that, sort of those three studies conducted at roughly the same time, um, our crime analyst, um, Dr. Noah Fritz, um, were proposing that he prepare an integrated report to assess the influence of gambling and public safety across all three uh, casino hosts and surrounding communities since opening. What will be new to this and new to, to the research is understanding statewide and local trends as well, statewide trends. So looking at what are the public safety impacts in these hosts and surrounding communities, but how does that compare to state statewide data, which is something that we just, we haven't done in the past. Um, moving on to community engaged research. Now, a topic for this hasn't been, um, hasn't been identified because the intention is that the topic is identified by the community a community engaged process. So we uh, are proposing that we set aside um, money for that specific purpose to fund roughly one to two uh, new projects in addition to the, the studies that we already have underway through our research agenda, but also for well, through the Public Health Trust Fund, but also the community mitigation fund. Um, we also will continue in FY25 working with the Community Mitigation Fund to support their research efforts to do to fund community uh, engaged research. Um, so that's separate from so what from what would be considered here. Um, in terms of data sharing, uh, we wish to continue to support the data sets that um, are currently in mode. I think we have over 20 data sets. Uh, largely from the SIGMA project, largely social research that's been conducted by UMass Amherst. Um, we would want to continue to add to that data repository um, and make that available through mode. Um, we also, and now over the past several years, and hopefully we'll, we will see the finish line um, in FY25, support player data um, from casinos. Uh, so that re for research purposes that's identified under Section 97, which basically says casinos need to provide anonymized uh, player card data uh, for research purposes. And so we have that very close to the finish line. And I can say with great confidence that that will be over the finish line um, in FY25 and available. But we obviously need to provide funding and support to, to get to that point. Um, there are two evaluation projects, uh, the first being um, a positive play study. So positive play is basically the extent to which um, Massachusetts player, uh, players engage in, in healthier or lower risk gambling. Um, it's different than identifying what problem gambling looks like. This is behaviors that are supported by lower risk gambling, and that means gambling literacy degree that people are committing to an amount that they want to spend and sticking to it, that includes honesty and control. These are all really great topics and areas to understand when you start thinking about prevention uh, initiatives. So positive play research really supports the Game Sense program in Massachusetts. Um, we've done these uh, uh, study in 2021 and 2023 to see, understand how positive play changes in, in the Commonwealth. We haven't done one since um, really since sports wagering launched in the Commonwealth. Um, and so I think it's an important study to support um, as we begin to understand how what positive play looks like with sports wagering and how we can tailor different uh, prevention initiatives in this space. 
And then the fine, final one is an evaluation of the voluntary self-exclusion program, an important resource that is offered through the Mass Gaming Commission. We did an early evaluation of it way back in 2018. Um, that actually covered the first couple of years that, that, that casinos were offered in, in the state. At this point, we offer voluntary self-exclusion for sports wagering for casino gambling. And we it's it's fair game to go back and ask, um, how is it going and how can we do this, this program better? Um, all right, just a few more pieces here. Um, specific to uh, sports wagering research, um, we're proposing a study of student athletes. So looking at um, using personalized feedback that's specifically designed to address the at-risk gambling behaviors among college athletes. Um, there's a, a potential opportunity if, if uh, um, this group recommends and the commission agrees to partner with the University of Massachusetts Amherst to do a specific study on college athletes there. Um, then the final one is there's always moving parts in sports wagering and um, issues that emerge that you can't necessarily see here in June of 2024. Um, and so we uh, are proposing that a certain amount of money be set aside for an ad hoc report that the commission can identify what the topic is in the research project as the fiscal year fiscal year begins. This has been really helpful in, in previous years um, as, as an issue arises, we can be more nimble in conducting some of the, the research. All right. Um, a core to our research program is our research review committee. We have roughly 10 research reviewers that are independent of the Gaming Commission um, that function largely much like a uh, uh, peer review committee in any of the academic journals. Um, these are highly qualified, um, I like to say really smart people um, that provide advice um, on the design of research, on um, the drafting of some of our procurements, but probably most notably, once we get a draft research uh, a report in, they they review it very closely and, and provide feedback. And usually those are uh, a at least a couple rounds of feedback before um, we they, the research team calls it final and it's delivered to the commission. So it in, in, in essence assures sort of the, the rigor of the research that um, comes to you, comes to the commission, comes to other, other key stakeholders. The final piece in FY25 is knowledge translation and exchange. Also identified as an important area of emphasis in that strategic plan that I mentioned up front is the ability to mobilize our research. Who cares if we're producing a report on X or Y if it doesn't it doesn't go beyond um, uh, uh, the research library that's posted on the Gaming Commission website? So we would continue to support a knowledge broker. Um, specifically, we have a contract with the Gaming Research Exchange of Ontario or Rio to help us to develop knowledge knowledge projects. Um, and uh, it's a small amount of money, but it goes a long ways to helping us sort of organize our research and, and get it out to the widest, um, the widest group possible. That's what the proposal is for um, FY25. Um, just so you know, this was originally shared with uh, not the Gaming Policy Advisory Committee, but the um, Gaming Research Advisory Committee, a non-statutory group, uh, people who are interested in gaming research. Um, they provided some feedback to us um, back in on March 20th of 2024. Specifically, their recommendations that came from that meeting is they would like to see a study of video gaming and esports, including but not limited to youth under the age of 25 and associations with problem gambling. Uh, they recommended an updated evaluation of the voluntary self-exclusion program. It was not in the original proposal. We we agreed that it was time, and we we added added that into um, our recommendation or our proposed research agenda for you. Um, and then the final was just a general sort of ongoing commitment, knowledge translation and exchange. So just exactly what I talked to you that Rio is is doing for us. 
Um, that was then shared with the uh, commission um, as a sort of an initial task on March 28th of, of this year. Um, and we um, haven't really done too much with it until we bring it here to you today uh, to see if you have any additional feedback on this, on this research agenda. So again, just where I started, what we would do is any feedback that you have, we will update this, this memo, this report, um, make sure that we, we capture that as accurately as possible. And we would then bring that to the Gaming Commission um, as, as advice to the Gaming Commission from you as we consider how best to spend those research dollars moving forward into FY25. Sorry, I, I wish I had a PowerPoint or something that was more engaging to talk through. Um, but and so I felt like I just talked a lot, but um, truly please, do you have thoughts that we should go going in this direction away from something? If you think this looks great, uh, I totally welcome that feedback as well. But thank you, and I'll turn it back over to you, I guess, uh, uh, Chair Serpa. Yeah, thank you. Wow, <laughs> wow. Um, Dr. Andrews, uh, that's what I have to say is, wow, that was a great, um, summary of the information you provided at the beginning and, um, you know, even in my role as executive director of the, of the gaming commission, it's hard to hear all that and process it all in real time. And I'm sure it's stuff for the group here on the screen and Mark. Yes. Thank you for that presentation and the body of work that you put together or proposed to put together for next year. I think everybody knows how fortunate we are in the Commonwealth to have the construct that was originally created with the creation of the uh, Gaming Commission and the funding for research and the legislature who put that as part of the, the mandate for our organization and the work that your group has done has provided quite a benefit to the Commonwealth and really the research that you're doing is being shared you know nationally I was at the conference that we had last month. So it's a real benefit to the citizens, the people who live here and people who are concerned about this topic. <laughs> that being said, uh, members, GPAC members, you've heard now from Mark and his agenda and plan for uh, additional research topics in 2025. And um, we'd love to hear from you about um, questions or comments on any of the above. And I'm, I'm sure that you are looking forward to hearing from Mark in response. So do people, who has a question or input? Caitlin uh, Sprague, go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, I was trying to figure out if there was a way to raise my oh. hand. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can. Okay. I was trying to figure out if there's a way to raise my hand on this platform and I couldn't figure out how, so I just actually did it. <laughs> but I just wanted to thank you for that super thorough presentation. I'm, I'm blown away by the body of work that you've put together. Um, and the only comment would be, I, I think it's really smart to have um, the set aside for anything ad hoc that comes up throughout the year. Um, but I feel like it's, it's a really innovative and complete um, list that you've presented and i'm really excited to see the results thank you thank you Kaylin. thank you very much for being here and and being a part of it any other members who have questions or comments or more discussion points i can go i i go ahead Jane. i just want to back up um, what caitlin said on the ad hoc um yeah i had three thoughts and they're all shockingly uh employment related um so when, um, you know, as you all know, part of the enabling statute um, really addressed employment. Oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, there were, you know, employment opportunities um, was part of the um, enabling statute. Um, when, um, and I don't know how you fit this into next, year or fit this into your um agenda bonnie and mark but um when i lottery was proposed in the budget 
I had just about everybody and their cousin call me asking, you know, from every part of the state asking, you know, what's the impact on the brick and mortar unemployment, right? If, um, yeah. you know, and um, I scrambled, I spent a couple of days trying to find uh, unbiased. <laughs> I think, Mark, I appreciate you bringing up, you know, how these studies can be, um, you know, anyone can make a study and have it say what mm -hmm. they wanted to say, but something that's completely unbiased, um, not written by the industry, not written by someone with an agenda um, on what the effects of iLottery and iGaming are um, on brick and mortar um, uh, uh, casinos. So I think the, I, I found some things that were remotely close i lottery wasn't really there was one study that kind of touched on i lottery because right it's not the same if it's purely i lottery i mean i look at what michigan is doing and it, it looks like just i gaming um so it's unclear whether that's um what it's going to look like but i gotta imagine there's some going to be some bumpers on what i lottery is going to look like but what does that look like for um for brick and mortar casinos in terms of employment the um you know, the sports books were, were one thing because the casinos were able to have, you know, a sports book in their um, facilities. So right. you yeah. can make some justification around that. This is just purely, you know, gambling on your, you know, couch um, if we're allowed to do it. So um, that wasn't the number one thing. I don't know if there's, I, I mean, I know the cat's out of the bag at this point, but um, if there is any point in looking at employment on sports betting, um, Again, you know, I just while we're on this call, I just pulled the Rhode Island's um, Rhode Island just approved um, sports bank. I think it went live early March and I was just looking at the revenue on table games and um, and slot machines. And, um, you know, it looks like table games are down nine percent. You, you won't see it in the paper, probably, yeah. but uh, the revenue on table games is down eight, nine percent, respectively, in the last two months. So, you know, that translates to right. Um, in theory, uh, fewer folks coming in the door, fewer, you know, uh, people being employed. Um, the last thing I'll say, I'm, I'm really glad I saw kiosks again on employment, but um, I would love to see not only in the kiosk report, not only the effect on the existing casinos um, employment, but also I know at some point and um Chairman, you could correct me. I, I haven't been keeping up with it, but um, I know at some point there's going to be um, Suffolk Downs and um, and um, God um, uh, the other horse, um, Queen Ridge. The other, the other, yeah, yeah. Rainham, yeah. yeah. Um, Rainham is going to. Um, they're going to have their own sports books at some point. Um, brick and mortar and and there's a simulcast only facilities that at some point are coming so i don't know to the extent that you can research these other brick and mortar facilities that are coming down the pike at some point but yeah. i'd much rather um you know see have 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 some information ahead of time on uh, and i'm sure the, the brick and mortar the upcoming brick and mortar facilities would appreciate information on whether these kiosks are going to cannibalize employment in the in their forthcoming facilities um i don't want to speak for them um but i got to imagine that um you know if there's 30 kiosks at fenway park and you know td garden right maybe you're not opening up a simulcast facility next door um so um, a couple of notes that that kiosk study is in the final phase. I think we're, okay. it's under review at this point, so it's coming coming very soon. Um, we are looking at employment impacts as it relates to sports gambling. We're working with the UMass Donahue Institute um, to look at as part of the overall study of the early economic impacts of sports wagering in Massachusetts. So that we're in the data collection piece of of that right now. Um, and I really valuable value uh, feedback from, from Local 26 from you. Um, there was a study that we just released uh, a couple of weeks ago that it's not just the number of jobs, it's the quality of jobs that, that are out there. And that was um, advocated for for a couple of years by your predecessor before it made its way on onto the research agenda. And then it took quite a while for that study to be carried out. But I think it was a really, it was a good sort of look at 
that's not numbers, but quality and advancement and all the and pay and all that all that sort of thing. So um so thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may, Mark, did Jamie get a copy of that? Um, I believe we send it out. If, if it didn't go out directly to you, it will come out in the next brief search update that we send out on a regular basis. But we'll make sure you get it if, today. You know, Thank you. But so that and that's interesting on the, that's a different, another way to look at the future with the iGaming, right, Jamie? That's, that's really forward thinking, right? Because we're just now trying to wrap our hands around the, what iGaming looks like compared to iLottery and everything else. But you've moved even past that as what's the economic impact and the employment impact. Very interesting. Thank you all. Great, great presentation. Um, great work you all are doing. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Chair. Anyone else, um, Commissioner or? Um, I'm happy to. Victor, uh, oh, Victor, Victor has his, yes, I see it. Victor, Mr. Ortiz. I'm trying to be better on raising my hand um, in these in these spaces. Let, let me just say that I, I want to just take a minute um, to acknowledge um, and appreciate uh, the former chair of the Gaming Commission, Kathy Judge Stein, for really her collaborative spirit and dedication and work in this space. Um, I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to work with her. And while the Gaming Commission and Department of Public Health have sort of two different portfolios and sort of in the context of this work, we, we share a commitment to our collaboration and partnership because we have a collective responsibility to mitigate harms associated with gambling. And to that extent, I wanna just also just say thank you to uh, the current intern chair, Jordan Maynard for his continuing uh, spirit of collaboration and, and working um, in this partnership with DPH. And, 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 um, and thank you, um, Chair um, Serpa for uh, your continued willingness to continue be in that same spirit of collaboration. Uh, to that to that end, um, I, I just want to say to both Bonnie and Mark, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, one of the things that struck me and and Bonnie when you you shared the current research, um, it struck me that there is a current research on recovery in regards to gambling, um, and there's a and and that is of great interest. Um, we saw that in our in our helpline report that was released a couple of weeks ago that there was a significant increase of individuals who are in recovery from problem gambling who have called the helpline. Uh, that number was, I believe, about over 200 percent uh, from the previous fiscal year, um, and that is pretty concerning. When in reality, when we understand that the just the nature of folks in recovery have multiple resources and the fact that they've called the helpline. Is, is concerning and I'm, I'm glad to see that the Gaming Commission is looking deeper at this and, um, and, and hopefully we can learn from that about how ways we can support people in recovery. Um, the piece about in regards to the current scope, Mark, thank you so much for the presentation once again. Um, I, I see that there's potentially others, other researchers who are involved in this space now from the current work that's happening and maybe in the future work and you see new partners that are coming in doing research here in Massachusetts. I, I would ask that the Gaming Commission consider and to think about um, maybe producing some type of document that really provide guidance to researchers around ensuring that the work that they're facilitating is promoting equity principles in the context of both their uh, uh, design of the research, the facilitation of the research and the analysis of the research um, get concerned when research is being conducted, as we know, and uh, populations who have been historically marginalized in the press are not representative in that particular study. And I know that, uh, Mark, I know you've been great about ensuring that um, we continue to strive forward in, in that space. And, la and lastly, I would also say that there should uh, hopefully some consideration of looking at veterans as well um, as a priority population in regards to furthering analyzing impacts on veterans as it relates to this issue. But yeah. thank you, Mark. Thank you, Bonnie, uh, for the presentation. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Victor. Well, we, as you know, we did do a study um, with veterans through community engaged research, but it's been a while. And uh, it's an important and, and at-risk group that I think uh, warrants the continued, continued research. So um, thanks for that. 
And thanks for the other feedback too. I think you're absolutely right, ensuring equity through all of our research projects, um, building it into the um, into the original procurement to assure ensure that that's embedded there. And I, you know, I think we we do it to an extent, but I think that it's it's worth an audit on our end to assure that that's happening. And um, yes, it's Texas Tech, and you may be familiar with Dr. Kevin Mills. Um, we are really happy to be uh, partnering him, with him on, on the project looking at um, Texas force wagering and recovery communities. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Bonnie. And Victor, so again, I, I want to thank you as well. I think that the presentation was very concrete. I think the presentation uh, showed diversity of efforts as far as the research agenda is concerned. Uh, we here in the city of Springfield, Mark, uh, Dean, and Bonnie, uh, want to again thank you. We were just um, awarded some funding to continue our research, and we're grateful for that. Uh, we know that uh, the city of Springfield's um, poverty rate, we know some of the data associated with our city really lends itself uh, to problem gambling and individuals in our city uh, looking for ways to increase uh, their income uh, by any means necessary, actually. Uh, so I'm excited to hear uh, the workforce piece. I think that's an important piece uh, for us to consider as we move uh, forward. In our city, it is a diversity of individuals who are involved in our problem gambling youth initiative. We are working particularly uh, with our uh, marginalized communities, I was, I am from the city, I am of the city, I'm concerned about the city. And so I'm very focused on assuring that everything we do, that the research yields some outcomes that can be shared with the community. So the community is not feeling as if they are once again being um, researched without the evidence that comes um, at the end of the research. And so some, that, some of that has happened. So we are grateful for the funding. We look forward to the collaboration. And I do think uh, thinking about workforce development and how we create pipelines uh, for residents, particularly uh, in a city that could use uh, needs uh, enhancement as far as our workforce and jobs, particularly in this industry. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for your work. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Colton Harris. Um, I love the projects that we're doing with Springfield, and it's both it's both funding from the Public Health Trust Fund as well as the Community Mitigation Fund. And to the extent possible, we follow principles of community engaged participatory research that, um, with the eye that you don't want to do research on people without there being some type of uh, um, outcome that benefits them. And so I think we need to. We need to really pay close attention to that, especially with, with um, yeah, we just need to pay attention to that across the board. So thank you for that. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, Mr. Trisha Chair. Harris and, and Victor, thank you for those comments too, for keeping a, a wide perspective on the work that we do and making sure that we have all perspectives as part of the work. So thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman. If I may. Uh, Mr. Chairman. We'll just yeah. go around. We'll you, go have the the you have the floor. <laughs> we'll go around in the loop. Um, so I just want to say thank you for to everyone for their comments. Um, I, I think that I have to get this out there. I We've really been on mark about the youth sports wagering. So the fact that he's worked with uh, worked with um, the folks at UMass to expand that study, right? And to learn more about that. It's really important because we do have that baseline study from the NCAA, but as most of you know, and I've seen some of you involved in it, uh, Victor, uh, so forth, the attorney general's office, along with uh, the NCAA and other stakeholders have come together to try to make sure that we are uh, tackling this issue. To me, we don't know if we're positive or negatively tackling this issue from that perspective, unless we have research behind it to say, hey, are we actually mitigating it? Or are we not? Um, 
And then uh, just to Commissioner Harris's point, I wanted to say, um, not marked up here, but we just toured the Western Mass Recovery and Wellness Center, uh, um, Dean and, and uh, Dr. Andrews. And I will just say, wow, what a great, great facility. And you know, I'm so happy. We're such a small funding part of it, but to be even a part of it at all, um, to see what the sheriff's team is doing there and how they're they're working to really um, better the lives of folks who've had some addiction issues um, was huge. So um, love Springfield, uh, love Western Mass, and um, it was it was it was heartening. It was really heartening what's going on out there. It really is a wonderful initiative, and we're hopeful, as you know, that that funding continues. And that was the purpose of the tour and kind of the information, just to make sure we're able to keep that work going. So thank you for saying that, Jordan. I'm grateful. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you for your comments. Um, members, additional discussion or anything else that people feel the need to add regarding the research agenda? All right, so I'm gonna. Yeah, uh, Chair Serpa, if I, I may just say, well, once the, we have the final research agenda, we'll reach out to you and um, with, with what it is. So we'll follow up. All right, great. And so with that, we get to go to the next item on our agenda, which is whether any of the uh, you members have updates for us, um, committee member updates. So I'll ask. Uh, if any of you there have updates for the full committee that you want to share. All right, hearing none, um, I want to thank everyone again. I think uh, Mark has once again shown that there's a full plate ahead and we appreciate that. And I appreciate you folks coming together to hear about that. and. Moving forward, if you have additional thoughts, please don't hesitate to connect with Mark or I or uh, Chairman Maynard. Um, but that being said, I would entertain a motion to adjourn if there is. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? There second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Um, all right. Everyone, really, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. The commission appreciates it. And, um, We'll be back together soon. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.